Okay, folks, I've just opened up InDesign. What you should be uh, looking at with your software use is using the right software for the job, okay? So you're not making style guides in Photoshop, you're not using uh, Illustrator to try and do photo real imagery, stuff like that. So InDesign is really, really uh, good at making magazines and books and things like that and perfect for uh, learning fairly simply or at least the first little bits and what we need for these projects are fairly simple. Uh, you can, of course, you know, spend years learning about it and uh, getting into the really intricate details in, in design, but uh, for what we need, it's fantastic, and you can learn it in probably half an hour. Okay, so I've opened up InDesign here. I'm going to create new. I'll go to print. Let's go to print. Um, it's okay if uh, it's you know we're using this online because uh, we really want A4 here. So uh, A4. So go to A4 and then landscape. You don't want facing pages. We can always do this later, but it's nice to do that now. Facing pages means you get a double page spread, and what we want is just one page, and then you flick through to one page again because it's online. You'll be giving it to me digitally, and we don't need to flick pages. We just need to scroll to the next one. So no facing pages and create. Then you have this. Okay, this is the page that we'll be putting our information on. I'm only going to set up some fairly simple stuff. What you're interested in are pages. Okay, you might have a look at object here as well because you can do object fitting and you can fit the content fairly well. Okay, so what we're looking at here, and in fact, before I go much further, there's three images over here that I'm going to pop into this document. All right, just some uh, just some material from my website. So this is what we're looking at here in pages. This is your master page, and it's set up so that anything above this line is a master page, and that's like a template that you can drag down below this line into your actual document. So you can set a whole lot of things up in your master page, and you can have more than one master page. Okay, so down here, you can see that you can make more pages. You can also right-click and do pages. But in pages, in the pages, uh, menu here. You can make more master pages. You can add details, little boxes, text, anything you want, and you can drag them below in here. And then you can populate this with pages that have similar sort of details on them. So, for example, anytime you want to, so say I double click on this, I'm now in the document. I double click on this, I'm now in the master page. And it's not changing here because there's no difference in details. So I'm going to double click and make sure I'm in the master page. Let's add some squares so that we can drop some images in. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this here and a rectangular frame tool and you can have text or images in this. And it's really nice for lining different bits and pieces up. So I'm going to click and I'm going to drag. Um, let's have say four per page. Okay, you can see the cross there. I'm going to click on the selection tool and I'm going to click and as I'm dragging, I'm going to put my finger on option. Okay, so that I'm click, finger on option, and can you see that? There's two little triangles there. Okay, line it up a bit better. So click on it. All right, put my finger on option and shift. If I put my finger on shift as well, it will mean it will line things up. All right, so once again, let's try that again. Rectangular frame, click and drag. Use the selection tool, click down on it. Finger on option means that whatever I drag will be copied, and finger on shift means that it's going to constrain it to proportions or to a line, so that I can just drag it across and it will line up. So there's those two, and that means I now have a master page with two images there. All right, let's just do images for now, but you could also do text. I might actually add text for you, and we can see that as well. I'm going to now click on those two, put my finger on option, 
finger on shift and I can drag down as well. Let's just do a page like that. So you now have one page with those four. Let's do another master page. So I am right clicking now. Right click new master page. All right, so there's a master page there. So double click, double click. This is another master page. Let's do one big image here. One big image. And let's do let's do something underneath here, a smaller, or well not just an image. I shouldn't say image because you can use text in here as well. That's for our image, that's for our text. So we have double clicking one master page with this setup, one master page with this setup. You could also do, incidentally, you could also do some writing along the bottom. So let's do another master page again. And what I would normally do is something like this. With your text, all right, you can do it this way. So you can do that and then type in it. Or you can just click and drag with the text tool. How about I just do that? And if I type in there, okay, I can do art book 01 or something like that. Okay. All right, so I know that's small, but it means that every time I drag that down, so you can see, you can see here, that appears on the page. All right, so anything you do in a master page and drag down will appear on the page. All right, so let's get rid of that, and we'll just do some imagery. All right, so once you drag things down, Okay, so this is the A master page, this is the B master page. You can already see, <coughs> excuse me, you can already see that InDesign has populated um, your document with one A master. So to unlock elements on your page, once you've dragged it down, uh, dragged your master page down into your document, you'll notice that they're locked. Okay, so to unlock them, it is Command and Shift. So command and shift and click on them or command and shift and drag over them because naturally InDesign will will uh, lock all those elements so that you can't move them. So just like I showed you before, if there was text at the bottom of your page or something, so uh, you know character design sketches or whatever or character design pages or whatever and you wanted that to happen every page, then you would put some text the same position on every page as uh, before you drag them down. I'm just going to show you how to do images and some simple text at the moment. Then it's up to you to know, uh, or up to you to try a lot uh, different things with it. So now that they're unlocked, I can click in each image. And please note, you are down in your document here. You're not doing this to a master page. All right, you can click in here and you can do Control or Command D. All right, now this will come up. All right, and you can pick these things. So these images here. Okay, so I'm going to click in there, Command or Control D, and I'm going to click in there, etc. Okay, and how about I do a different size of that first one? And that's basically your page. Okay, so you now have one page in your document, one page in your document full of images. Now you can do lots of other things. You can go to um, fitting. So let's click in the image. You can go to fitting and you can fit uh, content proportionally. So bang. You can do the same here. Let's fit uh, content to frame. So you can try lots of different things like that. Okay, there's shortcuts, and you can see the shortcuts next to it here. So 
there are a couple of ways of resizing manually instead of going up into your object. You can click in the middle with your direct select. Okay, you can click and if you hold down you can get a ghosted image of the whole image and you can move it around like that. If you just click down and move you don't get that image. So it's really nice. If you click down and move it around like that it's a ghosted image. Alright, so with the direct select, it's generally about moving the whole frame. Sorry, with the selection tool, what are they calling it? With the direct select, so <clears throat> slightly different to Illustrator uh, and other software. So with this one, the selection tool, it's generally about moving the whole lot. With the direct selection tool, it's generally about moving elements, all right, or moving points okay so that is a basic rundown of how to set up master pages how to drag master pages down below unlock elements in the pages and populate them and all you would do now uh, is you would export export as a print is fine Obviously you would name it and you can see that I now have a PDF. So <clears throat> let's, uh, let's do one more master page and I'll just show you uh, something slightly different just with that text again. Uh, how about we do a bigger page first though. Let's do this. So I'm going to drag this down. Just remember, Control Shift. Just remember, I'm down in the document here. Control Shift. Control or Command D. Let's put something really big in there. Um, just remember to click down and hold down to get a ghosted image. That's my pattern there. And I'll type in here uh, book 01 pattern, something like that. Let's get a better font. Something like that. So that then when I when I export, let's save over that. I am now getting a multi page document. Okay, so that's very, very simple. All right, so multi page document. The last thing I'll show you just in this very quick um, tutorial is uh, you can imagine that, let's say, Let's do another master page. Let's put some squares in there. Um, we'll just put character design. something else okay and of course if you want that to be on every page or something if you want that to be on every page you would copy it and then you could copy it to all the other modules or you could just drag that down every time and let's have a look at our book now all right and you could just see that that is on every page so you put whatever you want on those pages so instead of saying uh, you want to set up all the master pages if you want your book to be really different page after page you can actually drag all these rectangles and different bits and pieces all 
differently in your actual document. You don't have to set up a master page. Now, the beauty, of course, with the master page is that uh, you would set all those up in there, and um, you know you could you could make sure that they're all uniform. So here we go, and there's some really nice controls for lining things up, centering things, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So really, it is that simple to set up a fairly basic InDesign document. You can uh, set some master pages up. You can write along the bottom. You can add elements that you can do in every page. And it's really that simple to set up uh, some uh, really good documentation for your work in this unit.